The Lord be with you, and welcome to our online worship service. Today's service focuses on the gospel lesson from John 3, where we hear that famous verse, John 3, 16, where we're reminded of how much God loves the world, how much Jesus had to give up for us, and how wonderful that free gift of salvation is. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Believe in the Lord, Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. That, that, that seems, seems so simple. simple. Believe, believe and, and we are saved. Are saved. Why, Why wouldn't we believe? believe? It, it is, is so easy. We We'd have, have to be crazy, crazy not, not to believe. believe. Go from your country and your father's house to the land I will show you. Because, because Abraham believed in God, he left his homeland to follow Jesus. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Can, Can I, I do that? that? It, it doesn't, doesn't sound so simple that way. way. I, I see so often that I, I only want to follow you, Jesus, when, when it's when convenient, convenient, when, when I am in big trouble, when, when there seems to be no other way. way. I see that in so many ways I don't believe. As the man said, Lord, I, I believe. Help my unbelief. Jesus lived a perfect life of faith for us. As a servant of Christ and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamped against me, my heart shall not fear. Though, Though war rise against, against me, me, yet I will, I will be confident. confident. One thing I've asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. That, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. And, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He, he will conceal, conceal me under, under the cover of his tent. tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And that for 
with you and And also also with with you. you almighty and everlasting god mercifully look upon our sicknesses of both body and soul and stretch the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us through jesus christ your son our lord who lives and rules with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever Amen. amen our old testament lesson is from The book of Numbers, chapter 21, the story of the people disobeying God and him sending the fiery serpents. From Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out by way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Our epistle lesson is from Ephesians chapter 2, where we hear that we're saved by God's grace, not by what we do. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his graces in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the, of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come into the light, lest his work should be exposed." But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ.
us God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, the Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit for the message today comes from what the gospel lesson we just heard, especially verse 16. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What's the most familiar Bible verse? Maybe it's Psalm 23, verse 1, where we're reminded that the Lord is my shepherd. Maybe it's Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Maybe it's the one we've heard at the beginning of our Lent midweek services from Jeremiah 29-11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. For many, the answer is in our gospel lesson today, John 3-16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The gospel in a nutshell. So popular, so well known that you can find it on in the back of the end zone, back when there were real people anyway, instead of cardboard cutouts at sporting events. As popular as it is, though, as well known as it is, it's not always understood. Even those who first heard it didn't understand it, at least at first. Our gospel reading is a monologue, but it's started as a dialogue. Nicodemus was a high-ranking Pharisee who came to Jesus at night asking questions, seeking to understand who Jesus was. He was curious but confused. He had questions for Jesus, but didn't want others to know about them or that he was coming to Jesus for answers. By the time we get to where our reading for today begins at verse 14, his comments are done for this encounter. He seems to have been left speechless by Jesus' talk of the need to be born again and talk of the Holy Spirit being like wind. He came to Jesus at night and left as much in the dark as he came. It would take Jesus being lifted up for him to see the truth. But if we want to understand this verse, then let's look at it piece by piece. Maybe if we look at each part, we can understand the whole better. For God so loved. God loved, God loves, God is love. What does this mean? Pastor Max Lucado once described God's love like this. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. If he had a wallet, your photo would be in it. He sends you flowers every spring and a sunrise every morning. Face it, friend, he is crazy about you. For God so loved. And for God so loved the world. 
This isn't just about loving a certain group of people. It isn't about just loving people. It's about loving the world. It's about loving the cosmos is the Greek word here. It's about loving all that has been created. It also then includes all about loving the world in the sense that it includes those people who don't love God back. People who could care less about God. People who reject God. People who say, I don't need God. The Bible teaches that God so loved the world, yet the world doesn't love God in return. As John said in his prologue, he, Jesus, the Word, was in the world, and the world was made through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. That's part of what makes this truly amazing. What is truly amazing is that intensity of God's emotion, of God's love, that's directed towards those who don't love him back. That is, the intensity of God's love is not directed to just towards Christians or church people, but that the intensity of God's love was directed to you and your little life or me or my little life. The intensity of God's love is for the world, even for those who, were still, who are still sinners, even for those who reject it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, his only, his unique, his one-of-a-kind, irreplaceable Son. God didn't just give something easily replaceable. God didn't give something that's a dime a dozen. God gives something that's priceless, his only Son. And God gave, so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that whoever believes in him well, that reminds us, too, that this is a, isn't a gift that comes with a bunch of disclaimers. It's not doesn't come with those terms of service agreements we just click through without reading. It comes freely. Even belief is a gift of God, a gift of the Holy Spirit. We can refuse to believe, we can refuse to trust in God, but that doesn't change the, the nature of the gift that is free to us, but co cost God everything. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And eternal life here is not just about what happens after we die. It's not just about heaven or being with Jesus or the world to come. It's about the here and now. In some ways it's similar to the way some of the other gospel writers use the phrase the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. It's God's gift to us now. And God loves you. God loves the whole world. God gave Jesus in love for the world so we could have eternal life. It's why we can use that acronym, God's Riches at Christ's Expense, to understand the grace of God. Jesus was lifted up on the cross so the whole world could see God's love in action. Many who saw it didn't see what it truly meant. Many walked by and laughed. They looked, but did not truly see. But some looked up and saw Jesus as he truly was, as he truly is, what he was truly doing. A Roman centurion, no stranger to death, looked up and said, Surely he was the Son of God. Nicodemus, once Jesus was lifted up, would come out of the darkness into the light to join J Joseph of Arimathea to get Jesus' body and carry it from the cross to the tomb. The power of God working through those words of Jesus must have kept working on Nicodemus until he knew the answer to all the questions he's, he'd had was Jesus. Nicodemus then goes to Jesus, follows Jesus, even after all of his other disciples had run away and hide. Because even though once Jesus had lifted up, some would turn to him in faith, and they would be saved. Eventually, others would come to see what Nicodemus and the centurion did as well. They saw Jesus as the Son of God, as the one who, through whom we see God's love. Because Jesus was lifted up on the cross, what was once a symbol of death would become a symbol of life. What was once used to remind people of their powerlessness before the Roman Empire became a reminder of just how powerful God and God's love is for us. When Martin Luther was struggling with his doubts and depression, his father confessor, John Staupitz, pointed him to Christ. 
Luther found Christ most fully revealed on the cross. There he found disdain and derision, desertion by his friends, death surrounded by those who deserve to die, and God. He found the paradox of great humiliation and great exultation as Jesus was lifted up on the cross. The cross revealed the judgment of God that no human work could make humanity successful. It was God's everlasting no to the idolatry of making yourself like God, to the idolatry the serpent tempted Adam and Eve with. But the cross was God's yes to his children, the greatest example of love the world will ever see. Because God did not send Jesus into the world to judge the world, the punishment is already around us. God sent Jesus out of love. That's why Martin Luther called John 3.16 the gospel in the nutshell, and others have followed his lead. That's why it continues to be one of the most popular, well-known Bible verses. When we hear John 3.16, it is the gospel in a nutshell. It summarizes the good news about Jesus. God loved you enough to send Jesus. God still loves you, and nothing can separate you from that love. Because God loves you, you have been justified, you have been made right with God. It's a free gift to you that cost Jesus everything. That's the good news for today and the best news that you'll ever hear. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
In response to God's word, then, we confess our faith together in the words of the third article of the Creed and its explanation. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. We meditate on Jesus' great promise to us in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. But, but God, God demonstrates his own love for us in, in this. While we were, were still sinners, sinners Christ, Christ died for us. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. This, this is, is how God, God showed his, his love among us. us. He, he sent, sent his, his one and only, only Son into the, into the world that we might live through him. That he gave. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. But the, but the gift, gift is not like the trespass. For if for the many, many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, man Jesus Christ, Christ, overflow to the many? many. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And, and this, this is not from yourselves, it is the gift, the gift of, God. of God. His only begotten Son, here is my servant whom I've chosen, the one I love and whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. To, to the, the praise of his glorious grace, which, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, You are my Son, today I have become your Father. That whosoever believes in him, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Shall not perish. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but he has crossed over from death to life. Therefore, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those, for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus. 
Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Neither Neither do do I I condemn condemn you. Go Go and and sin sin no no more. But has eternal life. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Whosoever Whosoever sows to to please please their flesh, flesh, from the flesh flesh will reap destruction. destruction. Whoever sows to to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will will reap eternal eternal life. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. No No one who who has left behind behind anything for the sake of the the kingdom kingdom of God God will fail to receive many times as as much in this this age age, and in the age age to come eternal life. Lord God, we thank you for the gospel, the good news that salvation is through faith in your Son, Christ Jesus, and not in anything we have to or try to do. Help us to live truly in that gospel. So often we revert depending on how we can control, twist, excuse, or manipulate situations to make ourselves look good. That only puts an obstacle in the way of your gospel to us and others. Take away those excuses and twisting and open our hearts to live in your forgiveness. Be with those who are in need for Al Denner and Steve Ringley who had surgery this past week and for those we name in our hearts at this time. Continue to bless the distribution of the vaccine so that the weak especially can be protected, but give us the patience as we love our neighbors by taking precautions. Guide the work of those who share Christ with people in other lands, our missionaries Adam Lehman in Spain and Jonathan Nauman in the Dominican Republic, who celebrate birthdays this week, and for Kibeta and his family in Ethiopia, the Klausings soon to return to Africa, the Gorokis in Botswana, the Lutzes in Papua New Guinea, the Hansons in South Korea, Amanda Groshek in Ukraine, and Nathan and Beth Tonjes in China. Make us thankful for all your blessings to us, even in the little things in life, like wearing green on St. Patrick's Day and spring break for school children. All this we pray in Jesus' name. And as he taught us, our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, bread, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. And lead and us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us, us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, our Redeemer, in our weakness we have failed to be your messengers of forgiveness and hope in the world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit that we may follow your commands and proclaim your rule of love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
Who's with them, broke through 